This engagement is to look at the budget presented by the Federal Inland Revenue Services for the 2024 year. And we have an agenda here, the opening remarks, which of course I am doing. I don't have anything written, but I believe that uh, this is a responsibility that we mo should have done earlier than now. But for the fact that uh, so many engagements at the beginning of the year, FIRS do contacted me or the committee to seek for an extension of time to be able to present this budget. Uh, knowing the fact that uh, the executive chairman took over when the old budget that the earlier presented was already uh, presented to us. So when he resumed, he decided to withdraw that budget to present the one he felt is feasible and workable. So we are here, distinguished senators, my respected colleagues, to look at the budget and see how we can allow some of it or all of it to pass so as to give FIRS the opportunity to be able to engage in getting a lot of revenue from the public, from Nigerians. Uh, FIRS should not only concentrate in getting revenue from the revenue generating agencies, I believe FIRS should also look at its engagements on how taxable Nigerians can be made to be paying their, their, their taxes. It is only when we have these taxes that we'll be able to develop our infrastructures, engage our team in use that have been there unemployed, even looked at the possibilities in terms of growth and development to see how we can aggregate our revenue ratio to our growth ratio as well. Because today, if you look at the data, you will know that we are lagging. What we are generating in Nigeria should have been more. But anywhere in the world, taxes does not develop a nation at all. Taxes is just part of one aspect that will contribute to that development. So I believe we will do our best on our own part here and then make sure that uh, whatever we are able to pass is implemented fullest by FIRS. With this, I will maybe seek to hear some comments from my colleagues. Just brief, because I believe the paper is here. So I want to start with the review of uh, 2023 uh, budget performance. And uh, in the first page of the document that we share, our target for the year set by the MTEF was to collect uh, roughly 10 trillion. This target was reviewed in the year to 11.1 uh, tri trillion. But our actual collection for the year was 12.3 trillion uh, naira, which is 11% above the set uh, target. This uh, was achieved uh, by one, the internal reform being carried out by the internal, uh, the federal land revenue towards effective and efficient collection. And the second one comes behind the unification of rates and removal of fair subsidy, which uh, has led to increase in the revenue accruable to federal government, most especially for those revenue that are dollar uh, denominated. So that is the performance that we have for the year. And as a result, 
uh, our expected uh, revenue for last year was 320 billion, but the actual revenue is uh, slightly because we collect certain percentage of non-oil taxes. We do not collect any cost of collection uh, from any uh, revenue generated from oil. So we only collect cost of collection be, uh, from non-oil uh, revenue. So uh, the service collected 12.3 trillion as of 31st December 2023 of the total projected revenue of 11 trillion. This amount has exceeded the total annual collection of 10.5 trillion achieved in year 2022, and as well as 2023 target collection. So the performance based on our annual target of 11.1 trillion represents 11% achievement above what we have. The non-oil component of the tax collected stands at 9.6 trillion, and this represents 138 above what we have as targets. So and the cost of collection that uh, we plan was 320, but our cost of collection that we have was actually 384 billion, which is 20% more than our projected revenue. For 2024 proposed budget, sir, uh, because of what we've done in the pre preceding year of 12.3 trillion, the target received from MTEF uh, is uh, 19.4 trillion, divided into oil 9.6 trillion and non-oil to be 9.4 trillion. And I expected uh, cost of collection, which is our revenue to run the service, is 446 billion. And uh, the expenditure breakdown is as follows. The personnel cost is around 131, overhead 121, and the capital cost uh, is around 112 uh, billion. That is uh, what uh, uh, we have. Our projected cost of revenue uh, collection, which is our revenue, is projected to be 446 billion, which is 36 percent higher than what we uh, have in approved budget for 2023. Uh, and the assumption and strategy that we have for budget is that we still believe that the crude oil production is to average around 1.7, 1.8 for 2024. Crude oil price is projected to average 77.96 per barrel. Uh, the average exchange rate uh, based on the budget and what we projected here is around 800 to a US dollar. And then our plan is never to increase any tax rate for year 2024. The only thing we want to do is to deepen the collection and expand the tax nets. Uh, and then the, based on our historical cost for the last uh, uh, five years, we believe we will be able to do this. And also we assume that the regrowth in GDP will be 3.2. And then the, we rely so much on the fact that we will collect more from indirect taxes, which is VAT. And uh, whatever we have as a, a operation surplus. And one of our projections is that we projected that uh, there will be significant losses, most especially from manufacturing uh, establishment as a result of the exchange uh, devaluation. But we plan that our projection to balance that will be the uh, assets that we will have from these banks that have the uh, valuation being carried on on there. So we have planned uh, the loss that we want to suffer from manufacturing that by God's grace will be able to balance it from the uh, taxes, from uh, uh, revaluation that happens in most of our financial institutions that has the dollar balances. And then the rest is just um, uh, the plan that we have, how to strengthen our revenue uh, collection, because uh, at the service now, uh, we discover that if we are to collect more, we need to serve our customer well. So we've changed the structure in order to be, uh, because moving from 12 trillion to 19 trillion uh, is not small, given our economic uh, situation. So from the federal land revenue, we 
uh, within ourselves decide to change the way we operate from functional or type of tax unit to customer centric. So now we've divided the whole service into two, support group and call tax group. And then we've categorized all our customer now based on turnover. So we have large taxpayer, medium and small. Large, if your turnover is more than five billion, you belong to large. If you are one to five billion, you are medium. And anything less than one uh, billion, it is small taxpayer. And why we have to do this, one, is to be able to deepen the expertise in the way we undo our large tax uh, payer. Not only that, we want to stop multiple audits, which we see as a disruption to business continuity and business plan, that we will provide one-stop shop for all taxpayers. If you are a large taxpayer, you just go to one place, you do your VAT, stamp duty, all form of taxes you have, you solve it in one place, instead of moving from one office to the other. And also, we can then provide business services, because as Chairman has rightly said, we are the service. We are not only there to collect uh, taxes alone, we are there to help the taxpayer to uh, in, in advisory capacity to know what to do because of this uh, dynamic nature, how to, what is allowable, what is not allowable. Except we categorize ourselves in such a way that we can develop expertise in those area, it may be difficult. So we've changed and we are ready uh, with your help and then the, uh, in subsequent, uh, in the next few weeks by God's grace, uh, after the consultation with this committee, we are bringing the whole change in our tax law, all those old tax law that we can accommodate, that will make us to accommodate the new exigencies that we have now. So uh, with that, your permission, sir. So I laid the budget, and uh, I'm open for question, input, and any additional question and uh, information that may be required. Thank you. It's that uh, we move towards bringing this uh, review on the tax laws of this country. The tax administration completely needs serious re-engineering. Uh, Nigerians at this time are facing a lot of difficulties. So when I mean Nigerians, I'm also talking about the entities, because most of the taxes are paid by entities. And what I have seen, like ordinarily where the bulk of our revenue comes from, that is the oil sector. Today, with what is going on, the volatility in the foreign exchange I'm sure has also affected them. Uh, I told you earlier that uh, the managing director of uh, Total got in touch with me, part of those policies that we are making. So he also raised concern. If we look at our PIA, the Act, and then look at some of the taxes, you see that there are quite a lot of kind of conflicts. So I think there is need for a review, complete review of our tax system. And secondly, again, if you go through your assumptions here, especially number five, the technical cost T1 and T2, yes. which average at $48.71 per barrel. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, you will agree with me that this is almost the highest in the world. In the world. Yes the highest in the world. How much do we sell a liter of petrol today in Nigeria? So if you look at how much, and then we don't refine, we bring in this petroleum product. How much is a liter arriving at our ports? So if you see, there's a lot of, uh, lot of issues that need to be looked into if we really want to get these taxes and be able to advance the development of this country. So with this, I think if there is any, you will make, sh you will shed tears, I mean, shed some Light. lights on, the, on this Light. issue. I will. Yes, please. Thank you. Be buying cars, buying all these things, buying all that one. So when you see, and that is the spirit that you see 
in our budget uh, presentation. So the growth development is when we take into consideration the whole Nigeria budget, and that is why when you go to Ministry of Works, all other two, when you see their budget, when you see overhead the Ministry of Work going beyond their capital, you should question them because the overhead the Ministry of Work should be 20 percent buying fuel for islands that they used to check. The main thing because they are own is to construct capital. That is what they are meant for. They are not meant to balance uh, overhead. And so the same thing, I'm service provider. The bulk of my cost should be overhead, should be service provision. It should not be involved in capital uh, spending. That is what you see in the spirit of our, uh, of our uh, establishment. And the same thing goes for the same personnel that we, uh, that we talked about. If we are to move from uh, 12 trillion that we have today to uh, 19 trillion, you require people. Because in the pillar that by God's grace, through the restructure uh, organization that we have, you have people, you have process, and you have technology. We believe part of my vision by God's grace is that the 80% of service rule, service work is done by the, uh, the staff, not use of consultants. And why is that if you look at the nature of task collection and confidentiality, it is very difficult and it's part of the problem we have that if I have to get the third party to go and do assessment for me, when the law actually allows me Federal Inland Revenue to do the assessment, it is very difficult to now transfer that statutory duty to a third party as a consultant. So I plan, by God's grace, with your help, to change that perception that the 80% of the core work of the service is done by the service people. And if you will do this, I just explained to you, sir, that we've categorized our uh, group now, and you have tax, uh, large taxpayer. In, under the group of large taxpayer, you have large taxpayer oil and gas, large taxpayer uh, fintech, large taxpayer manufacturing. You need people that understand that. For you to get correct people with skill and expertise, you have to pay them. The person that is assessing mobile or shell is different from the person that is assessing Zach and Co. In quality, in training, in what is required. And that is what you see, by God's grace, we've included in the, what we have. And then on casualization, I agree with you 100% that that is not uh, what we should do. But while we know the ideal situation, given the cost and constraint that we have. Uh, FRS has 11,000 staff, staff strength. And then we have directors and everything. So uh, as much as I agree that we should not focus on this casualization, we have the plan of moving people as to the extent our cost can actually accommodate. And then I go to Senator, uh, uh, distinguished Senator Alero on the cost. If you look at where I put, I say this is assumption. How do we assume it? I was not there when the GMD did this presentation. Its context may be different. But me, as a taxman, what I consider is that after cost of uh, the sales, and I want to less the cost of sales, because it is the balance between that 70 something and 40 something that I tax. So the cost they will give me as a taxman is different from the cost of production that NMPC will have. Because the cost coming to me, because they know I'm going to tax the difference between the selling price and the cost. Possibly that is what uh, gives the difference between that 20 and 47, which is my assumption. Thank you very much. So, okay. uh, The relationship between inland revenue, federal inland revenue, and the states. Yes. Because a lot of manufacturers and a lot of people in the market are complaining of multiple taxation. Have you been able to sit with the states to be able to agree what is taxable and what is not taxable? And um, partially, secondly, uh, the VAT, since we are going to amend the Constitution, what do you think are we going to be doing in the VAT to balance the VAT so that VAT will be properly balanced by all parties. 
Uh, let me leave it on that too, so that my colleagues can get ahead with uh, you. I mean, August. Thank you. Um, I, I went through the assumptions, the estimates, and I have seen that uh, the purpose of FIRS is to optimize tax collection. Yes. Well, I see the performance of 2023 of the non-oil uh, income tax, that's company income tax for non-oil, as well as the, for that of oil and gas. I've seen the performance far, uh, far more than the estimate for 2024. I want to know why. So for others, the estimate of 20, for 2024 is higher than the performance of 2023. But for oil and gas, for company contracts, for non, for non oil as well as oil and gas, estimate of 2024 is less than the performance of 2023. Uh, I want to know why, which assumption you use in getting that. Uh, and then when I went through again, I saw that you are planning to employ over 600 staff on permanent basis. That's from 10,000 plus to about 11,000 staff. Yes. And um, then there's casualization again. I don't know how we can reconcile because uh, you are getting 600 plus and you still want about 2,000 plus casual staff. I, I want to understand why do we need this? That, that, that number, that high number of engagement, both permanent and thank you. And, uh, um, I just have two summary questions. Number one, let me commend the way um, you ramped up 2023. And that, of course, you can tell that it actually showed in the actual performance towards the end of the, uh, of the year pertaining to non-oil receipts. Yeah. You understand? And of course, uh, but just like um, my, uh, my colleague mentioned, I think the first question that should come to the fore is that in 2023, when um, in terms of non-oil, and um, there was a major achievement of, um, actual achievement of about 9.6 trillion naira. So one will wonder why we will be um, under budgeting or underestimating ourselves. And the question is not, I mean, and that will also lead to the second, which is the fact that now we are all quite um, um, aware of the current dollar, Naira dollar exchange rate. Now this your budget is predicated on 800 Naira to the dollar. Now clearly, I mean, the reality that we have as early as in January is that we have almost a differential of about 600 plus Naira based on the assumption used for the budget. Now the question there will be, that the, you see, so one, what are we going to be doing with the surplus that will arise from this, one? Two, even in your own operations as well, because you also charge 4% um, cost of collection, are you also going to do the same and at the same time increase your, 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 your expenditure profile? I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. So that, that, those will be my two questions for now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will start from uh, my boss, my mentor, Senator Ujo Izokalu. Uh, the question about permit me to say this. That, that, uh, that, uh, will, not, that will not save you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you will, uh, will uh, uh, by default, and the uh, true grace of God, I double as the chairman joint tax board, which is the connection between the states and federal government. But uh, just before that, you will agree with me that Mr. President has seen these, uh, these multiple taxes as a major problem. And in August is one of the steps he has taken to set up uh, the presidential committee on tax reform and fiscal policy. And the mandate uh, Mr. President gave to this committee is that by the end of their term, when they are done, Mr. President advised them that we want only one si uh, single si uh, digit tax that we have in this country. Today, agreeing with you, we have more than 62 type of taxes being collected. But the sad news about that is that less than eight out of those 62 taxes accounted for 97%. 
of the collection. So the other one is just problem. But because we run a federation and we have law, for example, anything that has to do with motor park, uh, road taxes, and this is under the purview of the state. So uh, the plan, hopefully, and I know we are consulting, we are engaging the state, and we've uh, demonstrated to them that when we remove all these multiple taxes, most especially the one that led to increase in food prices, because I read in one report uh, or document that when you move possibly goods from the north before it gets to the south, you had uh, more than 40 type of taxes, and that is what increased the price. The, uh, and the, the, the most unfortunate thing about this is that most of these taxes, because it is not well collected, is not being accounted for. So it's just creating problem for us. So we are working through a joint tax board to make sure that we harmonize and we let states see that this gives us problem more than solution. And uh, they are listening to that. And also we are waiting the report of the uh, committee set up by Mr. President to actually harmonize all these taxes that at the end of the day, we won't have more than eight taxes or nine maximum that we are running both at the state and federal level. And on VAT, these are really constitutional matter. And one of the recommendations I've read, which uh, with your consultation we'll bring here, is that all of us as a nation, we must come together and decide how do we want to collect this. Uh, nobody is wrong, nobody is right, but we will look at the efficiency and the unity of this country in making and coming to conclusion as far as this VAT collection and distribution is concerned. Now, assumption on CIT and uh, oil. Why is it that the assumption we have for 2024 is actually less than what we have in uh, 20, actual of 2024? I will tell you two things that happened. Remember that when they are doing MTEF, it started around September, where they've not seen all the results. And historically, uh, the bulk of taxes comes in in June, because the financial year ahead of most of this company is at December. So they have three months to prepare their paper, three months they pay. So you have bulk of taxes in June, and then overflow to July and also to August. So, and MTEF is done in September. At that time, based on the projection they have, they don't know that uh, the miracle magic will happen in the last three months of the year. And what has happened? One, because we unify the rate, most of those payments that were done in dollar that comes in, in uh, not only for us, even in custom, because custom collect VAT for us, that comes in in uh, September, October, uh, November. They are dollar denominated. Projection in the book was at 480 at the beginning of the year, or some 380 or 480. But by the end of the year, because we are collecting actual, the rate has gone to 1,000, 1,002. And that is why you see the increase that the actual that uh, you have is now more than what they were projecting when they were doing MTEF in, uh, in, 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 in 2024. Now, why, yes, and if you look at it, and the, the flip, the other flip of that question is that if you go to oil, you will see that despite the fact that oil is, was underperformed in 2023, you see the jump they put in there. So my, as a, as a, as a, as a revenue advisor, is to say, okay, hold it. Let us be bullish in those things we can control. And let's be just less bullish in those things that we cannot control. So now we have the capacity to continue to increase our non-oil taxes because oil price is not our determination. The only thing we can help in that one is increasing our own production. So we understand the flip, but we just don't want to be changing the book because we know, and I'm saying it, that the projection in the oil may be too far. So now that we under, uh, in quotes, uh, project in all other revenue, let that balance each other. And so in my own internal uh, target setting, actually that is the communication I've given, that irrespective of what they give us now, 
you know that we are not the one controlling oil. The one we are controlling, let's take from oil, move it to this one, and then we can go far, which actually was the part of strategy we used at the last uh, three months of last year. And that is why you see us overshooting uh, what we were projected. Uh, and then uh, for my uh, uh, for my boss, said that the cost uh, uh, on staff strength, that why do we want to increase um, 600 and we still do casualization? Now, if you link it from what I've explained, today I've said that 80% of service call duty, I want it to be done by the service people. Now, I have oil and gas section separate now. I have tech separate now. I have digital separate now. I need skilled people. It's not the same thing as someone I get driver that I'm casual, that I will not transform, you will become the, uh, my financial analyst oil and gas, no. So the 600 is skilled people that I want to man the service. So those are the one. And like I said, I don't agree also with casualization, but we are limited by the availability of fund, and then we have the plan within the Human Resources Department to make sure that we reduce it to minimum, minimum, even if you have to do the casualization. And then the, um, on the last question uh, from my boss, on the 4% and the dollar that we are seeing, this is my position. Taxman is a reality, is actual man. I'm not on projection. Tax collection is on historical. Whatever we have as an assumption in the book, it is the real that I collect as taxes. So I don't want the problem about the rates going up and down. I know for a strategic reason as a nation, the reason why we have to peg the exchange rate the way we peg it. But if we say the oil price is 75 in our book, if tomorrow the oil price is 150, we will collect the money. The same thing is uh, conversion rate. If I said, okay, the rate at which I want to collect money from you is uh, uh, 800 to $1. But if the day I want to collect is 1,000, I will collect it. If it's 500, I will collect it. So this one is just for book purposes. Me, as a taxman, I'm an actual person, and uh, I collect from actual. So, and then when you say that, okay, what will happen to my cost of collection? The good thing in the structure is that most of these dollar denominated taxes are non-tax collection fee because they are oil and gas, and I don't collect any cost of collection on oil and gas. Uh, most of the, where I collect uh, cost of collection from, it is actually from non-oil and gas. So the percentage of this exchange rate is minimal. So it balances it also, you know that I'm building the head of, uh, headquarters and they also import. So the little change you have there, I use it to balance my exposure also from the uh, capital I'm doing in my <laughs> capital. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 19 trillion. This includes oil, gas, and other sources? Yes, sir. With the recent dollar instability and error, and the way we as government want to work. Do you think 19 trillion, as the large economy is, can be enough for us to work and satisfy our, own, our people that brought us to this place? We want to show difference. And I think the reason why you are there is to show difference. So, but 19 trillion, where we are converted to current exchange rate of dollar to Naira, I think it's like a, a small county in the United States budget. A small county, not a big one in New York or someone in Las Vegas. So, Mr. Chairman, we should look at the trillion of 12 of those days and 19 of today to be equal to be matched, what can be matched. So why don't you think of going 30 trillion because of our situation? And tell us what we do to, to make it because you know 
we want to really show difference of this government and want to show people this, yes, we are for them. So and only that we can achieve is to ensure that we have enough money to do the miracle without it nothing. So I want you to look at from 19 to 30 or 35 because of situation instead of 19. To me, 19 is low, 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 below the, what we're expecting. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairman, let me start by commending you for the performance of the service over the last quarter of last year. The ramp up in revenue is, uh, is remarkable, and we ask that you continue on this upward trend. Um, I'd like to go to your answer to distinguished Senator Mohamed Onawo's question in regards to the ratio, um, the ratio analysis between CAPEX and your recurrent. And um, in your explanation, which was very good, you now ended up talking about your corporate headquarters. I'd like you to inform this committee exactly how much was the initial cost of the corporate headquarters. Um, I see that maybe you'll verify that, but from your budget analysis, it was 98.1 billion. In 2023, 49.5 billion was budgeted for it. And in 2024, 10 billion has been budgeted for it. We'd like to know what the actual initial cost outlay was for it. How much has been spent so far? Has there been any variation? And if we can get an expected date of delivery of that project. Thank you very much. Um, I feel that, um, we, I mean, we're all aware of the current uh, situation in the economy vis-a-vis -vis exchange rate devaluation, which you have mentioned a few times. So I, I'm going to ask two questions that, that bothers on exchange rates. The first one is those foreign workers in Nigeria, expatriates, the so-called expatriates, I am aware that majority of them, if not all of them, are paid in dollars or foreign currencies, putting pressure on our lean resources. Do you collect taxes from these expatriates? And if you do, do they, are they paid in Naira or in dollars? And uh, Chairman, are you, wouldn't you support the idea that we should, as a nation, start respecting our local currency? by not relying or using dollars at all. I mean, would you imagine the scenario where the use of foreign currencies in Nigeria are prohibited? Would you think that that is the immediate solution to our problem in Nigeria? Thank you, sir. And uh, the executive vice chairman, and members of your team for a job very well done, uh, especially with reference to your performance in 2023. Virtually, all, I mean, you exceeded all the targets, okay? And uh, I feel that uh, at the end of the day, you are going to continue with that zeal into 2024. Having said that, I want you to, uh, the Gosoka kind, the person in charge of research department is here. The informal sector, there is a significant percentage of the informal sector that has not been captured. Those operating within the informal sector are also beneficiaries of public utilities. You need to do your research. There are many of them, I won't list them out. There are many of them out there within the informal sector that you need to capture and bring them into the tax net. It is very important. Having said that, 
Um, I had your comment a few days ago with respect to tax credit, where it looks like the president of the country feels that we should continue with that policy. I don't know. Maybe, our, maybe they quoted him out of context. I want to seek further clarification on that, because there is an abuse of that process. Having said that, I feel that so many uh, things that so many, uh, so most of the strategies that you have earmarked here are strategies that can really, really enhance your performance in this financial year. You know the problem that the country is grappling with today in terms of debt burden. We expect you to do much more in terms of revenue generation. We want to get out of this debt trap, okay? And as, as you know, a significant percentage of the 2024 revenue has been earmarked for debt servicing. That shouldn't be the case. But naturally, if you don't service your debt and you are blacklisted out there, it will affect your international credit rating. So I will not blame anybody for earmarking that much money for debt servicing. But please, we need to regulate ourselves out of this debt burden. And you are going to play a major role. I happen to be the chairman of Customs Committee, and I've also given them a, an Aquilian task. I told them that they are going to re, we are going to re, uh, review their, their revenue uh, target by mid-year. And I want to plead with the chairman of the Finance Committee to do the same. We will review, because we are relying on these two giants to take us out of this debt burden. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that, uh, uh, domestic revenue mobilization is very key to a sustainable development because it is very difficult to rely on debt if we want to, and that is the focus of Mr. President. So we take that as a responsibility and we will definitely uh, do that and we will not shack in that. Uh, regarding the RITC, which is tax credits you mentioned, uh, there is no miscontrol, there, there is nothing. What I explained that day here uh, was that uh, the program is uh, all still very laudable, but at the stage we are, and I give example to people, if you are the first born of the family, you are the only one going to work in your family, and you earn five million per month, and they decided in the, within the family that we need a laser scar, and we use your salary as a repayment, uh, as a collateral, that every month you are paying one, one million for the lesser car you get for the family, because the family does not have a car. And you've got the first one, but they are using the lessons, they enjoy it, everything is good, and they are paying one, one, billion, one, one million out of your salary. And then they call another family meeting, and they say the next thing for us to buy now is to buy another lasers because we don't want to be using only one. This can be tired and everything. And then out of your salary again, they want to take another one million eh? and still continue. And you come and say, come, let's finish. We pray these new lasers will not break down now. When we use this laser, because as the sole provider of this family, I uh, have a uh, younger one that wants to go to school I have another one I need to take to the hospital, and it's this money. I cannot continue having two cars when I can't send my younger brother to school. And that is what I've said. I said today, NMPC through RITC has committed 2.5 trillion to road construction in Nigeria. And they brought another one, they said they want to expand it by another 2.7 trillion, and I said no. That is not allowed. As a special advisor to the president on revenue, I will not say I have all my revenue and I want to use it for road. Is it the only road I want to do? I've already committed 2.5 trillion to this one. And people are complaining about the efficiency of it, and that is even separate. That what I've said, which Mr. President has approved, is that all the one that we have in pipeline, we will complete it. But it's not expandable. And that is what we say. Because NMPC is number one revenue source for us as a country either in time of taxes or non-taxes. We can now not use all their money, their capacity, and then we are using it to do road that is horribly managed by me, Federal Land Revenue. What capacity do I have as, a, as an accountant to be the one approving the road for 2.05? How will I manage it? How do I know what they say? It can go see to so, 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 and I approve. Uh, what, which staff do I have there? And I said it is only Ministry of Works that has director of works in every state. 
take everything through budgeting process. If we have, these are revenue, so let's put the whole revenue into the coffer and let's follow pro, uh, budget process. Then everybody can monitor, they can decide. That is what we've agreed. The same thing Mr. President has agreed, and the same thing NMPC and Ministry of Work has agreed. Now, most especially, NMPC is now a limited liability company. In order not to encumber them, in order not to disallow them from competi uh, competing effectively with their counterpart, I don't know any other country where you will say the shoe focus. And I said it, if you have excess cash, go and dig more well, go clean more well, and get us more production. We will handle the way we will do our road after you spend your 2.5 trillion. That's what I have agreed. And that is that one. Now, the second one on informal sector is the same thing, sir. When you look at what we call informal sector in Nigeria, another name is that these are businesses that are not registered. And I've told them, there is a program I met, I said, no, I'm not going to continue. They said how to collect fat from informal sector on the market and everything. I said, no, that is not the right way to go. The only thing we should do is bring formality to this informal sector. Because are you saying shoemaker is informal? Those that give us the little bit on, they are shoemaker now. Those that are gushy, they are whatever, are they informal? Let's go, let bring formality to our informal sector. And that is the focus. We should not develop systems that will collect taxes from informal sector. No, that is wrong direction. We, because putting them as informal is not the best. We should put process in place through small and medium scale, let them get registered, let them do business. That is why in my new group, I create small taxpayer. We call them any turnover less than one billion. You go there, it is normal. So that is a way of bringing formality to informal sector that we have. So we should not develop system to go and tax them in their poverty level. We should bring them out of poverty first, and then we tax them. And that is in line with Mr. President, that we are going to tax prosperity and not poverty. So that is the point uh, on that. And then my colleagues, uh, co-consultant before becoming the uh, <laughs> senator, <laughs> uh, there are some things <laughs> that uh, that you said. <laughs> when we say that, can we? So, that sorry, sorry, let me, sorry, let me just uh, um, uh, clarify this. I'm not asking you to go and tax poverty. No, no, I'm I know. asking you to capture that informal sector. We will. Whichever way you can capture it. Yes. Because they are yes. also beneficiaries oh, of the public goods. Yes. Yes. They are beneficiaries of the yes. public goods. Yes. 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 No. Yes. no. Yes. That's, so that's what I will do. Uh, our economy. And as a result, there are minimum requirements for us to operate in such economy. That's number one. Number two is that what determines, and I've said it, and I, that is the, my first question uh, uh, that I responded to, that I want to restrict the comments on foreign exchange to central bank. But if I'm just to say and not to be quoted, is that what determines this is demand and supply. So at any time where our demand is more than what we have as supply, we have problems. So the things, which is what I've seen this committee, Mr. President is doing, as much as we increase our production capacity, eh, well, the issue of dollar or whatever will be, soon be a thing of the past. So we just need to focus on getting, and which we are doing now, having correct economic decision. But going straight and say, let's ban. The reason why it's very difficult for you to say, let's ban it, is that you are not the, it's not our legal tender. So you don't control the production. And then when you say you ban it, people have it in pocket. How many people even have it in their bank account today? So the direction of economy cannot be banned, banned because of many things we've signed into as a global player. So we will, with your support, continue to focus on uh, getting work done and make sure that uh, we'll achieve what we need to achieve that will bring the demand for this forex done. And the moment the demand is done, uh, which has happened before, by God's grace, we will get there. This uh, initial problem we have is that compared to when we have foundation, you have dust, you have everything. As soon as we settle down, uh, I'm very sure that the
country will see the benefit very soon. Uh, and then for uh, my mentor on the 19 trillion to 30 trillion uh, that we said, don't forget that as a government, we are responsible to make life better for our people. Tax payment is the civic responsibility of people. And you've made law to what and what we can collect. And 19 trillion, it is what has been approved for us through the MTEF. As much, and I said, which is the, uh, my response to Senator Tokumbo. This is target given to us. We are not leaving any stone unturned. Uh, it is be our desire to reach 30 trillion. Uh, that would be our desire. But as it stands today, and given all the economic indices, and going by Mr. President's decision not to increase tax rates, that we just need to go and expand and make sure that uh, we tax prosperity uh, and not poverty, that we don't want to increase. Let's manage 90 trillion that we have now, and uh, hopefully, God's willing, next year, we'll be able to achieve your goal of uh, 30 trillion. I haven't said that we are not uh, stopping. And then there is another question on expatriates that they collect money. Good. So we have two types. Majorly, like 90% of these expatriates pays taxes to states because they are individual. So it's not federal government that collect or federal uh, inland revenue that collect these taxes because they are individual. They are under pay, pay, pay personal income tax, which is purely in the hand of the state. The only few, which is less than 1% that we we'll collect, is that, and even I have some states fighting us on it now. You know those people that work offshore, that they don't have any state, those expatriates that we cannot attribute to any state because they are uh, offshore. So those are the few ones that we uh, collect. And also to tell you that part of the new regulation that we are bringing is that we will make sure that all taxes, eh, most especially when the currency of that transaction is not funny, they have to be paid Naira. So they, because it's useless for us collecting those taxes that are not uh, fully denominated, collecting them in for a uh, uh, currency. And it's part of the reform, God's willing, after your consultation, uh, that we are bringing in here. So the last one is on the headquarter. The question you asked me about the headquarter, about percentage, honestly, I may have to come the back to you. The German just make it very that's what I said. Yeah. Yes, I may have to come back to you on that because this is purely a technical work that I need to get figure on, and I don't want to misquote my director of facility. But what I can say is I know that uh, the, the time to completion now, they say is next uh, 18 months we will do. So when we get that data, I can send to the secretariat and send to you directly. Thank you. Okay, this will be the last round of questions. And uh, Senator, operate with full compliments of our commissioners. Uh, when are we going to see you working with your commissioners, not your directors? By the act of National Assembly, you are supposed to have commissioners that will work with you. Um, that will make you to maximally collect the revenue due to, to our own the, administration. To, to the federal government. Secondly, I have seen that uh, you want to continue appointing agents to collect VAT. You says, he says it in your, in your statement here. Yes. Um, in my view, it will amount to waste of public funds because you already have staff that are collecting taxes, including VAT. So uh, it will amount to waste of public funds to also appoint agents to be collecting uh, revenue. Because we may end up paying 20%, while you are also taking 4% of whatever you collect. So why don't you do away with agents and concentrate on using your staff to collect whatever revenue you want to collect? You want, on, uh, uh, let me let me commend you on the comments you made on tax credit. Yes, there is 
already please listen oh, there is already a lot in the hands of uh, NMPC and also the Ministry of Works so uh, it is better for them to concentrate on completing what they have started with before uh, going into another one but NMPC is not the only customer we have on tax credit they are not the only company operating tax credit. We have telecommunication companies, MTN in particular. We have Junkos, and a recent I saw them being two or three roads. And uh, I think there is also uh, cement companies, Bua, Dangote, they are all doing tax credit. So maybe perhaps if any one of them wants to take a particular role, uh, you can allow him to proceed since uh, it's not going to temper with whatever has been agreed upon. Uh, I have seen that uh, in your presentation, you have personal cost of one seventy seven proposed. Well, last year it, it was 131 billion. Are you anticipating minimum wage to be increased to about 50% uh, or 70%? Okay. Right. So uh, thank you, sir. I will start from the first question. Having the full complement yes. to work. Uh, you know by law that established uh, federal land revenue, uh, after the executive chairman, you have coordinating director uh, that has like that, and uh, on top of that, you have board that is only appointed by Mr. President, sent to the Senate for confirmation, and then they become the board. So, and that one, you know, it is in the hand of Mr. President, as at the time, they appoint every other board, uh, the board of all other government agencies, that will be done. But as to the coordinating directors uh, that we have, uh, we continue. The, despite the fact that uh, uh, the term of my predecessor ends, I think most of the coordinating director terms still subsist. And since they are doing a wonderful job, I don't see any reason why I should terminate uh, their appointment. So they are... Uh, uh, professional, they focus on their job, so and they have the term with them, so they are going. On the agent, I agree with you 100%. Uh, uh, you, uh, the part of my first comment is that my intention is to move minimum 80% of the job of the service done by the service people. That is my goal. I said, but you know, it is not in one day I will get there. Uh, you see why I want to recruit people, I want to recruit this, is just to do, but when I'm in that transition phase, I don't want to live, uh, live home because people that want to spend the money will not wait for me and say because I'm restructuring, I should not collect. I am 100% with you. I'm not fan of consultant. I'm not fan of the agent. But because of the exigency of our time now, that is not the same day I will recruit 600 and they become expert. And so that is why we have those one in a specialized way that we have them. Uh, and then for the other task credit, as you said, my own is just to make sure that we they were From not overstretched. Yes, that's yeah. it. So, okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, last question yeah. so that we can. Are there a few comments? The out of six, none of them have taken up. The when we met last week, and we spoke about the issue of tax credit. My name is Shreba for Life Studies from Ogun Central. We also spoke about, Mr. Chairman. We also spoke about Project Gazelle. You didn't address it then. You may also choose not to address it now. But the only question I will ask you is that I hope it does not have any impact on our revenue projection. That's my first question. The second question is, 
I noticed that we outperformed our expectation in terms of collection revenue last year. And every time we do so, our expenditure also goes up. Even this year, we're expected to make 464 billion naira from collection revenue. And incidentally, our expenditure also rises to the same level. <laughs> Must we always have balance in terms of the revenue and the expenditure? And the last two, the last two questions, on page 15 of this booklet, I noticed that, and I must thank you, you patronized Galaxy Backbone. Now I speak as the chairman of Senate Committee on ICT and Cyber Security. But I also noticed that you put satellite broadcasting access charges there. I am asking, are we also patronizing NACOMSAT, another agency of federal government that provides satellite services? And finally, you want to link FRS database to other databases, which is commendable, but in doing so, we must also be cognizant of the need for data protection and privacy. Because once a breach occurs and the details, financial details of your high net worth individuals are in the public domain, it will undermine these beautiful and lofty ideas that you have put uh, in place. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And what strategies is that? It is, do you have any plan, really, on how to have um, a graded taxing of those who are supposed to be producing to be able to earn forex for us? Because, I mean, it's known economically, as a taxman, you just want to collect money. But if there are no people, who are doing business and producing, you will have nobody to tax. We are in a very difficult time in this country. We know what Forex is happening. Producers can't even accept Forex and bring in, you know, uh, raw materials and what they need to produce. Most of them are actually folding up. Businesses are collapsing. So what's your plan as a tax man to give lubrication for these people, or you are still going to be taxing and be hitting everybody all the way, because at the end of the day, you just collapse the economy for that. Thank you. The time that uh, my good friend was talking about, uh, first, the personnel and the issue of the head office. I know, too, that uh, uh, when you talk about personnel, you are also talking about capacity. Now, you, there is this issue that for me, I would want to suggest that there must be some kind of unbundling. Because I see your reporting channel in terms of regional offices, from Plateau, from uh, Benway, from everywhere North Central, you have to be reporting through Kaduna. There's no, it's not, uh, for me, it's not very uh, economical, convenient. Why can't you set up certain offices around those revenue uh, driving revenue driving areas so that you unbundle I see it as unbundling the entire headquarters for ease ease of work then the other one is that uh, when we he mentioned about issue of recognition for small businesses yes we call it informal but you mention it as uh, small businesses and anytime somebody is doing businesses he's also looking forward to an opportunity of becoming a big business. Now, are you thinking of other incentives that will also propel them to move, for instance, if you say your target was one billion, within a year, let me make up billionaires out of one billion. That will also generate more revenue. I see this because that aspect will also help in not only adding revenue, but also producing more our very young youth people are now into different kind of things. Within a few moments, you see them put, pull in a lot of money. So that is the kind of incentive that I'm also thinking, that as you move into the small business, don't look at them as small business for a long time. Look at them as small business 
but make them billionaires within a short within a short time. Then the last one too. Yes, I agree. I agree totally with you about issue of agents. When uh, our big uh, brother Uncle Alero was trying to condemn that, you know, revenue is about meeting target. Yes, for instance, if we said our target this year is 10 billion, you must meet up your target. And I know from experience that it is not always relying on, on uh, the public servant. If you want to meet up a target, then you must talk about agency. Because once they meet up your target, they are also paid a commensurate. Uh, so I don't want to say I condemn in total the issue of agents and, uh, and consultants. I will also want to encourage you, uh, encourage you to engage them so long as you are meeting your target. So on the whole, I know that I've always commended you. I said you are not, uh, you are doing very well. And you are not letting us down at all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, th thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we we'll give you just two minutes to respond. Protection and every uh, that we said, yes, uh, we take that one serious, and that data protection is one of the reasons why I am proposing that 80 percent of the core duty must be done by the service people because the service people are the one that can have the oath of secrecy. They have something. They have their pension, they have everything Consider, co compared to consultants that I just bring to come and do something and reveal it. So we take that one. And when we talk about balanced uh, budget, because you say when things increase, we increase our own. But if you look at our performance in 2023, you will see that despite that, the fact that we have more revenue, our expenditure is far low than the revenue we have. And this part of the SS will be returned back to uh, Akadan General. So is it just a way of balancing budget? When you have uh, income going up, we also balance it uh, with budget. So on that, I think uh, I'm very grateful for your support, uh, and I'm looking forward to... Which, uh, you captured the total between the revenue and expenditure. Revenue was $446.34 billion. Projected cost, you are putting it at 446.34. And then all your assumptions, we have seen them. And we believe that, that the total of 4% remains your uh, cost of collection for revenue of 446.34 billion naira. And with this, against a total of 446.34 billion naira, representing a balanced budget is hereby considered and approved. Protection and every uh, that we said, yes. Uh, we take that one serious, and that data protection is one of the reasons why I am proposing that 80% of the core duty must be done by the service people, because the service people are the one that can have the oath of secrecy, they have something, they have their pension, they have everything. Consider compared to consultants that I just bring to come and do something and reveal it. So we take that one. And when we talk about balanced uh, budget, because you say when things increase, we increase our own. But if you look at our performance in 2023, you will see that despite that, the fact that we have more revenue, our expenditure is far low than the revenue we have. And this part of the SS will be returned back to uh, Akadan General. So is it just a way of balancing budget when you have uh, income going up, we also balance it uh, with budget. So on that, I think uh, I'm very grateful for your support, uh, and I'm looking forward to...
tax havens, tax waivers, tax holidays, tax suspensions, and even the ins check all those abuses and if you do that the tax administration and tax rebate system in Nigeria will not only ensure fairness but also bolster revenue generation so for critical national development we really want you to look at this because this country have lost more than more than 17 ta uh, 17 million trillion in five years, due to ta tax waivers and tax holidays. The backward integration policy of this government, which gives room for those holidays, we need to review it. So I think with this, I can say that um, you are fostering much of accountability in your collections. You are doing very well. The innovations you are bringing to the tax administration in this country need to be commended. So I believe with this, uh, without any objection from my members, I'll put it out. Do we go ahead to approve the 2024 budget of Federal Inland Revenue Services? So we have passed your budget now.